Hello everyone, this is another QCenter video at UConn, uh, this time on integration techniques. Uh, we've posted another video on trigonometric, trigonometric substitutions where I went over the theory of it and one example. And in this video we're going to do over, uh, we're going to go over a couple of other examples so you see it in action. So I wrote here again a uh, general slide that I went over in the previous video of when you use trigonometric substitution and how and why does it work. So check out the other video. So in this video what I want to do is do a couple of examples so let's go right for it. So here is one example where uh, I try to solve this integral and none of the easier methods seem to work uh, because of the, uh, the three halves power here in the denominator with that expression inside. There is, no, uh, there is no x in the numerator, so I can't really use u substitution uh, directly. So what I'm going to do is a substitution, but in this case a trigonometric substitution. So I'm going to uh, begin by repeating here my integral that I want to solve. Okay, And now I'm going to uh, do my substitution, my trigonometric substitution. Since I see a constant minus uh, the square of the variable inside something that is some fractional power, I'm going to choose my substitution to be x equals uh, a sine theta substitution, where the a is the square root of this number that appears here. So it's going to be a 4 sine theta. Uh, the dx then is 4 cosine theta d theta. And I'm going to also figure out how much is the uh, quantity inside the square uh, root here. That if I substitute 16 minus uh, 4 sine theta squared, if you simplify, this is 16, 1 minus sine square theta, which is 16 times uh, 1 minus sine square theta, that's cosine square theta. Which is the whole point of the substitution because that square will allow me to cancel the square root that appears up there. So uh, we can go ahead and substitute. So uh, the integral becomes uh, 16 minus x squared is 16 cosine square of theta. to the power of 3 halves, times dx, and dx is 4 cosine theta d theta. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this over here, and this becomes then uh, the square root cancels with the, the 4 square here and the cosine square here. So uh, what I get is 1 over um, uh, 4, cosine square theta, everything to the third power. Oops, without the square, this square went away. Okay, and times 4 cosine theta d theta. So one of these uh, will cancel with all this, and then what I get is um, 1 over um, so 4 squared, so I'm going to just write this outside, 1 over 16, 1 over cosine squared theta d theta. Okay, so now this 1 over cosine squared theta, if you don't recognize that integral, uh, perhaps you recognize this one. This integral is related to tangent because, in fact, uh, tangent, the derivative of tangent, is secant squared. So this is, in fact, an immediate integral. Uh, this is just the integral uh, is equal to 1 16th of tangent theta plus constants. And we're done. We've been able to integrate this function. In terms of theta, though, uh, the original integral uh, was in terms of x, so we want to go back to uh, expressing this as a function of x. 
So for that, we talked about uh, support triangles in the, at the end of the last video, and this is where they come in handy. Uh, now I want to express tangent of theta in terms of x. This is the relationship between x and theta, so how much is tangent theta? So for that, you draw a triangle that satisfies this identity. So we need an angle theta that, um, whose sine is x over 4. And then uh, we're going to need to know the tangent of theta x over y. So we need to know how much is this quantity y. Since uh, Pythagoras tells us that uh, y squared plus x squared equals 4 squared, 16, that tells me that y is the square root of 16 minus x squared. And therefore, tangent theta, which is x over y, is x over the square root of 16 minus x squared. There you go. So now we can uh, substitute back into tangent theta that this is, in fact, 1 over 16 x over the square root of 16 minus x squared plus constants. And that's it. That's our final answer. And you can, uh, you can uh, yourself verify that if you take the derivative of this function, you, in fact, get that uh, function inside the integral. And therefore, that's the solution. OK. So that's an example of how you do trigonometric substitution um, in one case where it's an indefinite integral and you use the support triangle to go back to the original variable uh, to express your answer.